Hi, this is Laura. This is my third online free acrylic painting class. They are free. Uh, nobody is required to pay for these classes. They're absolutely free uh, because of what we're all experiencing with the pandemic and the shelter in place. And it's been my goal to offer every class that I was supposed to have in person at Artful Soul downtown, which is my business that I share with Mickey Bond and uh, Kirsten Wing. It's downtown in downtown Santa Fe where we have classes, uh, which is closed and we're not having classes in person with people. So every class that I had scheduled that is not happening because of the pandemic, I have made a personal goal that I would offer those classes online so that people can still do them even though we're in a shutdown. So um, this class was scheduled a while ago and I'm a little bit behind. So um, I'm doing my best. So this is my third class. And like I said, it's absolutely free. However, if you're still working, because a lot of us are not, including me, if you're still working, please try to offer a donation if you actually do the class and take the class in exchange for the class because if I can receive enough donations, I'll be able to pay my April rent and my insurance and um, the internet. I guess we still have to pay for the internet even though we're not down there. So, you know, I've got a couple bills, so that would help. Um, but if you don't have it, don't worry about it. I hope this brings you some joy while you're trapped at home like I am. And this one's going to be pretty simple and straightforward. So here we go. Oh, hey, I'm back. Uh, there was something I forgot to tell you. Uh, I have two prerequisite preliminary videos that are really great for you to watch before you try any of these online acrylic classes. One is about your basic materials and where you can order them from. There's not a whole lot of them and I found uh, the best quality at the lowest prices. So if you look in the description box below the video, there's a list and links for you to buy all the materials. So you might want to check that out. And the other video is blending, shading, and color mixing and just familiarizing yourself with the acrylics and how to use them. So if you've never worked with acrylics before, you've never taken a class from me, or you just feel unsure because uh, I, I put down what materials I felt were best for what I teach and for what we're doing. So even if you've worked with acrylics before, it might not be the same as what I recommended. So you might wanna just check that out first, try some of the exercises first, so you don't get frustrated when um, you start a painting, an online painting class with me uh, because you don't have your materials set up the right way or if, you know, I just don't want you to get frustrated. So check those two videos out first before you do any of these online acrylic classes. Okay, so something I uh, wanted to show you really quick is this is just an old canvas I use for something else. And I'm going to use this for my next painting. So I'm just using some leftover neutral sort of latex house paint. And I'm going to cover this up so I have sort of a neutral surface to start my painting with. So that's the wonderful thing about acrylics is if you don't like something, you can just cover it right up. And um, also latex paint that you get at the hardware store is essentially the same stuff as the acrylic paint that you use to do a painting with um, the same acrylic paint that you get at the art supply store, except for the quality isn't as high. You know, it's engineered to do something else. So the paint that you buy at the art supply store usually has a higher pigment content. It's usually thicker. You can thin it down. It just has a uh, different stuff and it makes it a different higher quality probably has stuff so that you know i don't know the way it's mixed up it's probably so that um it will spread a certain way as far as like 
the mediums that they put in it. So, but it's essentially latex paint though. So there's no problem. I mean, there's a lot of artists I know that actually use a lot of uh, latex house paint in their art. So anyway, so now I have a neutral surface and I'm sort of recycling a canvas, you know, that I did something on that I didn't really care about. And that is your little bonus lesson. Okay, I've mixed up the colors. And if you look at the image, you will see that at the very top of the painting, there's a very deep dark blue, and then some regular blue sort of peeking through. And then I have blues mixed with purple. And then we head into some purples and pinks in the sky and some lighter shades of those purples and pinks. So I mix those up. And then it sort of goes right into a bunch of orangey colors and red colors. So I have uh, just some oranges mixed with reds here. And then uh, I do see some pale oranges. So I mixed a few up and yellows. Okay, so this is, we're gonna start by doing the sky. Um, and the silhouette is the last thing we are going to do. So the biggest, task in this painting is putting all of these colors in the sky and blending them together. I have this old canvas that I covered with like a Adobe colored uh, exterior latex paint that I had laying around because there was already a painting on here and um, I didn't want to use a brand new canvas. I just thought I'd recycle this one. So Anyway, if I were having this class down at Artful Soul, before we even started doing the sky, I would probably instruct everybody to just put down a base coat. So the base coat I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do blue up here, and then I'm gonna go in here with like a stripe of like a pale purple, and then I'll probably do the next section in a yellow or a peach color, and then I'll do like a brown or a black at the bottom, okay? All right, so that's next, is just the base coat. Now, as you can see, I'm just going in with like a, a preliminary base coat. None of this is final. It's like, it's like when you get your nails done, let's say, and you put on a first coat and then a second coat. So I'm not really concerned about this looking really good and blended and all of that. I just want, um, there to be a base here so that when I do go in here after this dries and I really start trying to make my sky that it isn't gonna be all streaky like it looks now like you can see these marks here and stuff because um, it'll have a coat underneath it to um, make it appear less see-through and more, as they call it, opaque, which means not see-through. So um, I'm just laying down a base coat. Okay, so this, like I said, is just a base coat. I did some blending. Um, I will go into discussing more about how to blend. You've got to do it while the paint's wet. 
and that's why I love having all of my paint ready because I can apply a variety of colors fast because it's already mixed up and then it's very easy for me to blend. However, I do a whole video showing you how to blend. So I hope you've watched that first. I am gonna explain it a bit, but I would hope that you had watched my video on how to blend your colors and practice that because that will make this much more easy for you. I'm not gonna go into as much depth explaining how to blend this. I'm more of gonna demonstrate it and just do it. So you should watch my uh, blending, shading, and color mixing video before you do this class. Anyway, for the silhouette, oftentimes when there's a silhouette, let's say there's a sunset scene and there's something silhouetted, it's not just straight up black. That is too extreme and it looks funny, makes it look cartoony, makes it look flat. When I look at this um, painting, what I see is a very, it's black, but it's got some red and purple in it. So I'm gonna mix purple and red and then add black and I'm not gonna have it as dark as straight up black. It'll just be a very dark version of these two colors mixed together. And so these are the colors I just wanted to show you before I mix them up that I'm going to be using to create the silhouette. Okay, now I have my base coat and it's, it's dry. And if you look at the image, this is not really what the colors are gonna end up looking like, um, but it's, it's close enough. Um, and now I've got sort of a coat, a base coat down so that now when I go in and really start shading, it should, you know, not look brushy and transparent. Now, the paints I'm using are not really super high quality. So if I find that as I start shading this and trying to paint this, that it does look streaky and transparent, then I may go, I may do a second coat, let it dry and then do a third layer. So we'll just have to see. But um, now I'm gonna really try and put the colors in that are more like what we see in the picture. So what I see up here is I see um, deep dark blues going into purples here, going into peachy colors here, and then going into yellows down here. Just, well, I guess that's pretty, I pretty much described what you see on the canvas. But there's more sort of like streaks and there's more blending going on and there's more variety than you see right now. Um, so, I'm just gonna go for it and you can watch me and I'll talk about how I'm blending while I'm working. What was the other thing I wanted to tell you? Um, there was something else. Oh, I was gonna say, I'm following the color scheme that I see in the image. By no means do you have to do that. You can make up whatever sort of gradation and sunset colors you want. Um, I'm doing what I see in the picture. If if you start a painting and it doesn't look exactly, especially when it's something like a sunset, nobody's gonna know that your sunset doesn't look like the sunset in the picture of the cactus. This is your painting. If you start getting creative and into what you're doing and you decide to add a streak of blue in a different place or you wanna do it a little different than you see in the picture, go for it because it's your painting. And as long as you're, uh, you know, creating a sunset scene, which you don't even have to do, but if you're creating a sunset scene, it doesn't have to look just like the image is my point. So you decide, but um, I'm just gonna follow the image. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna go in with this uh, lighter blue because I kind of see that up in the upper left-hand corner. So I'm gonna go in with the lighter blue up here. And we'll see if it's really covering like it's supposed to. And then, um, I don't really see, I guess I see a, maybe a little bit more of it here, up in here, maybe a little bit of this blue, but not a lot. The rest of it's sort of like this deeper, darker blue. So I have a blue that I mixed with some black and I'm gonna go in up here and do a streak of that up here. And I'm also gonna bring some of that into here. 
and put some here so that it gets darker. And then I'm gonna go in with more of that blue and I'm just gonna blend this dark black color with the lighter blue up here. So I'm just going back and forth and I'm leaving some streaks in a few places where I want them. Now, this black that I mixed with the blue, it almost doesn't look dark enough for me, so I might go in there with, like, a, I have an even darker shade of it. I might bring some of that in. And it looks really dark to me, like right here. And maybe a little bit here. I'm gonna move this down, I can't really see. Okay, so one of the tricks that I've taught you is like, if I just keep going like this, I'll end up mixing it all together and there won't be any differences between the colors. It'll all just become one color. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off my brush real quick so it's not so full of paint and then go back in and do a little bit of more of this blending with a cleaner brush. Yeah, I think I like that. That looks good. Okay, so now, what is down here? It should be darker right here. Down here, then there's almost, it's almost like these light blue and purple clouds come in. So I also see sort of like this purpley color breaking through like right up here. So I'm just gonna lay some of that in there. And then there's more here. And then I see more of it here. Right? And then it turns into sort of like a pink over here, like this really crazy pink. So I'm just indicating where I think some of this stuff is and laying some paint on there. I haven't blended anything yet. I'm just putting it there. Then in between there, I see some purple. It's almost like a purple mixed with pink. So I'm gonna go in with this purple in here. And I'm gonna blend this stuff a little bit. But see how nice this looks because I have a base coat underneath it. So even if it is a little streaky, it almost seems like it's okay because I've got this purple base underneath it already. I know what that is. Yeah. It's a little bit of light purple there, but I put too much on there. Cause it's much, it's much darker purple here. Pretty dark right here. It shouldn't be so light. Oops. I don't know if I like this paintbrush so much. I'm gonna try this other one. Now this one's round. Let's see if it makes much of a difference. So I'm just blending. None of this is final. I will say that this is starting to dry here, so I can't really blend into that anymore. But I see some, like a blue, sort of goes up into there, right? And then, um, once again, like I said, there's this purple here poking through. Okay. And then there's 
some more of that here. And then there's like really bright pink, like I said before, right here. And it kind of comes out like that. Maybe there's some of it here. And then what I see is I see like a purple streak in there. And then what's happening is there's almost like there's lighter colors going into there. So I see like a very pale pink going up into here. And there's even like a super light couple of shades in there. Now this is drying up here, so I'm not gonna go back into that. I'm working with the wet paint down here now. And I see very pale pink here. Sorry for my heater, I know that's loud. That's kind of how I see that. So I'm rinsing my brush off because it had dark, had gotten some dark paint all over it. So I just want to rinse that off. I want it a little damp so I can go in here just with some water. Let's continue to spread this. my brush off again so that I can go in with this white that kind of comes up into there. And that is kind of what I see. You know, so it has to do with like wiping your brush off, looking at the image, putting the lights where you see them, putting the brights where you see them. I'm going to put a little bit more of that bright pink in here. Where else did I see it? Oh yeah, over there. feel like I see more blue right there. Okay. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. So down here now, I'm going to go down here. And to me, it just looks like very pale pink, like we've got. And then it gets maybe a little darker pink, but not much. And 
and then over here, it starts getting cheap. So I'm going to go into my oranges, rinsing off my brush. And what I see is like a very pale, maybe I should have this way, you can see it. A really pale, uh, peachy color here. Maybe even more peach. And then it starts to get much more orange on the bottom of that. So I want to fix this where that's meeting that. So I'm rinsing off my brush. I just want to make sure that there's a nice transition right here. some of this neon orange. But then it gets more orangey down here and then it starts getting super dark orange down here. Really dark. So now I'm gonna go in with like an orange mixed with red, right? And there's a whole sort of thing going on down here with dark reds and oranges. So I'm just gonna start it. Now I'm going to rinse my brush off. Everything's smaller and closer together here because it's further away from you. And as you go up into the sky, those clouds are right over your head, so they're bigger. So this is bigger, and as it goes down, it gets smaller. Sorry about that. So yeah, so as you get towards the horizon line, just as if you were to see like a road here, it would be really big by you and it would get really small towards the horizon line and all the dashes in the middle of the road would get sh smaller and closer together. And that's kind of what happens when you're looking into the horizon. As things move towards the horizon line, they get smaller and closer together. It's bigger up here, smaller going towards the horizon line. Okay, so anyway, it's getting smaller and closer together as we get towards the horizon line is what I was trying to say. Okay. So I'm just using a little water here to try and blend this together. It was starting to dry too. So now I'm gonna wipe my brush off because it was full of dark orange. And I'm gonna try and bring this lighter color down a little bit. Okay, I'm just messing around. Okay, so next I see very pale peachy clouds here. They're even kind of pink up here, these colors are so pretty. So I'm gonna go in with maybe even a little bit of light pink up in here. Just a little bit. And I almost see like, that's not white, it's like a very light pink that I have but it's very light here. You see a light streak here too. Okay, I think that looks pretty. And then I see a little bit of like these orangey highlights in here. And I see some more pale oranges down in here. Right. And then it gets kind of complicated over here. Um, there's almost, this is a, um, an orange, with a lot of red in it. It's not red, but, and I see it's kind of dark here, so I'm gonna put that in. I see some of this continuing to come across over here. 
Not so much over there. And then I see, you know, some more oranges that get worked in between it. I just am gonna keep wiping my brush off and then I think I'll go in with a more pale orange. Something that's a little bit more pale here. And I might go in with something even more pale over here. A little bit of that there. some bright orange okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually I'm gonna use a smaller brush I'm gonna blend this so I'm getting the brush wet got my paper towel here and I'm going to just blend some of this. So if you look, when I start blending, if I don't want it all to become the same color, all of that's on my brush. So I'm gonna rinse it off. And I'm gonna go in with this where it's lighter. I actually see that it's pretty light. So if you're looking at the, the reference, the picture, um, if you squint your eyes when you look at it, you'll see, I'm gonna take this dry brush and see if I can just sort of feather this. Um, if you squint your eyes and look at the reference, The darks should pop out and the light should pop out more if you squint your eyes. So if I squint my eyes when I look over there, I see that there's like light streaks, like white. Like up in here, there's like a light streak. And I might even go in with some more. And then I also see more light streaks sort of in the middle ish, like around here. Go white, put a white little brush off. So, I mean, listen, none of this has to look exactly like the reference. Um, but you should, even if you start going off in your own direction, remember that it gets smaller towards the horizon, things get choppier and closer together towards the horizon. And continue to look at the image as a reference because it'll help you to at least have a nice variety of lights and darks by looking at it. And if you follow it somewhat, it should help you to keep it looking uh, like a real sunset, you know. It's kind of dark right here.
and it looks kind of dark right here. But the reason sunsets are easy is because you can make sunsets in so many different ways and everybody, it registers with everybody. Everybody knows what a sunset looks like. And so, and they're not exact, you know? So nobody's gonna say, oh, your sunset looks off because, you know, you made a streak in the wrong spot. Now, if you do that with somebody's face, you're doing a portrait, it's real obvious if you make a mistake, but if you don't totally follow everything you see in this image, it's not gonna be obvious at all because it's a sunset, so you kind of have more freedom to improvise with this one. Lost with the white streaks. This is heading into yellow, yellow's territory. So I'm going to go in here with some yellow. It's starting to get much more yellow down here. And now I might use yellow mixed with white. And there's like a big fat streak of yellow here. Some sort of like dark red color is done. I'm just filling in with like a yellow mixed with white in these areas. So I've kind of like laid a bunch of color down here and then I'm going to start blending it.
Okay, so I've got all this color here. I can find a brush I like. Let me try this one. It seems too stiff. Might be okay though. Oh, that's so pretty. So what I'm doing is I'm continuing to look at the reference and I'm just working back and forth and adding colors and taking colors away, rinsing my brush off, blending until I feel like I'm happy with what I did. I'm careful that when I blend that I continue to wipe off my brush if I need to. Every time you go to blend something, you pick up the color that you drag your brush through. So if you don't want to keep spreading that color around, you should rinse your brush off. And I'm just kind of letting some of this be like, um, I don't know. Okay, so I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to keep working on this. And I'm going to turn on some music. And you can just observe what this does. All right, well, you know what? I don't know how much of that recorded because I just stopped painting and I noticed the camera wasn't recording. So I guess I'm just going to have to explain this to you. But essentially, here's my colors, right? And what I kept doing was I kept looking at the reference and I said this several times while I was painting, but it probably didn't record, that you can use the image as a guide 
uh, to help you understand where some light should be, where some, some dark should be. And I was explaining that up high in the sky is usually right above your head. So those things are closer to you and they're bigger. And then as things move towards the horizon line, they get closer and closer together and smaller and further away. So usually clouds will be, if there are clouds, they'd be tiny and close together and they would get bigger and further apart as they go further up away from the horizon line and closer to you. That's a way that you can create the illusion of depth. What's going on in this sunset is there's really just sort of striations of clouds, but the, if you notice, the lines get closer and closer and closer together towards the horizon line, even in your reference. Um, so that creates the illusion of depth. And so you wanna keep looking at the reference, not that you have to follow it exactly, but if you squint your eyes and look at the reference picture that I gave you that's on the screen, you'll see that if you squint your eyes, there's areas that are light, there's areas that are dark, um, it's a nice composition, so you don't want to just get lost in it just being, uh, you know, just a, a straight up gradation of colors. You want there to be variations. You want clumps of darks, clumps of light areas. And so it's good to look at the reference to gauge where the lights and dark should be. Do you need to follow it exactly? Do you need to make your sunset look exactly like the one you see in the image? No, but I do think it's a good guide because it'll keep you um, having the colors uh, you know, looking more believable as far as night sky working down towards where the sun probably is. Um, lines closer together, further apart heading this way. Uh, interesting placement of darks versus lights. So I think it's good for you to use it as a reference. The cool thing about a sunset is nobody's gonna say that this cloud looks wrong or, you know, that you shouldn't have this dark line here because sunsets are so varied that it's not like doing a portrait where you would really need to get the features in the correct place and do things right. You can improvise a little bit more doing a sunset, but I still recommend following the reference as a guide and then get into your own flow. I mean, you can't work on this forever because what happens is the paint starts to dry. But I went in with the blues and the blacks, right? Then I went in with the purples. Then I made sure that I put pink and purple up here. And I kind of laid all the paint on there and started painting it. And as I was painting, I continually wiped off my brush if I didn't want to homogenize or make all the colors the same. So if I wanted a lighter streak here, I would put the light paint in, wipe off my brush, blend it, wipe off my brush, add some light here, blend it, wipe off my brush so that I'm maintaining a light color here and a dark color here, but still blending it a little, but not so much that I lose the color. That's why you wanna continually have a paper towel handy, your water handy, and lots of paint laid on here so that as you're blending, you'll be removing paint and wiping it into your paper towel and throwing it away. And so I was adding and removing paint until it got to a point where it seemed like it was getting too dry and I really couldn't do anything. It needed to dry. But aside from that, I, I'm pretty happy with where I've got things. Now, if I wanted to, I could even go into this and work in more. I could add more lights after this dries and do more because the layering effect of the colors being in the right place with the acrylics um, makes it easier for you to continue to build one layer upon the next. So like if I wanted to go in here with like some pinks and purples, since there's already pinks and purples here, um, and if the paint was somewhat transparent, it really wouldn't matter. So I have more freedom now to continue to work into this if I want to, but I'm not going to. But anyway, I'm gonna have to go look at my video and see how much I even captured. I'm really sorry. I'm not gonna redo this. This is your class. So um, hopefully we captured some good footage of me blending. Okay. <laughs>